Atlanta 10 Basketball is brought to you by your local Volkswagen dealers, proud to be sponsors of Atlanta 10 Basketball, and by GMAC Mortgage. Our knowledge is your power. Of the many nights in St. Joseph's history with ball games here on Hawk Hill, as we said, this may be the most electric here at Alumni Fieldhouse in Philadelphia. Number 11, Xavier, being introduced out onto the floor to the very hearty boos of the St. Joseph's crowd. Here's what they look like on the floor. One of the best teams around. Remain saddle along with David West and Anthony Miles up front. And in the backcourt, Lionel Chalmers and freshman Diedrich Finn, who has done a terrific job stepping into the Xavier starting lineup for their head coach. And that is Thad Mata, the defending Atlantic 10 Conference Coach of the Year from last year. Look at that record, 48-10 and 10 here in his second season now as the head coach of the Musketeers. The other side, you've got St. Joseph's. Pat Carroll, Dave Mallon, Alexander Sazanoff up front, Jameer Nelson, who we told you about in the open, and Tyrone Barley starting for the injured Delonte West, who's out with a stress fracture. The two times that he has started for West this year, Barley has gotten a career high in each game. It's going to be up to him to fill that void in the backcourt tonight for Phil Martelli. Here in his eighth season, he was an Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year two years back and has won 61% of his games in his eight seasons on Hawk Hill. Well, when I talked to both coaches today, they were really excited about the game, not only because of the environment, but it's the month of March, and everybody's trying to get ready for the Atlantic 10 tournament. And what a way to go into the tournament. This is a tournament caliber game. This is an NCAA level of competition. You have the number 11 ranked team in the country playing a team that was in the top 25. And we talked about two of the marquee players Players in the conference, Jameer Nelson and David West, two future NBA players we'd like to thank. What a way to go into the month of March in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Now take a look at the series history. St. Joe's does lead the overall series. Xavier's had more than its way with St. Joe's in Atlantic 10 play, but in the span of time that Phil Martelli's been the head coach, when ranked teams have come to town, Xavier has twice been a victim of an upset here at the Fieldhouse. Start of this game delayed slightly tonight. Steve Claridge, the Hawk, being honored here on senior night. Also, Mike Farrelly, Alexander Sazanoff, among those being honored here on senior night. Very emotional night. And there's Phil Martelli, Jr. His mom, Judy, giving him a hug. She teared up out on the floor. What a nice night. The first time a Hawk head coach has ever gotten to give that congratulatory hug to his own son. And in this case, his own wife as well. Nice night here at Hawk Hill. That was the emotion. Now, here comes the sizzle. Well, it, as if this game needed more drama, to have a father and son, uh, obviously, on the same bench together, and the son finishing his college career in an environment like this, playing the number 11 ranked team in the country against God, it doesn't get a whole lot better in college basketball. 121 consecutive starts for David West. Well, here we go. Musketeers have had some close calls of late, but they are in the middle right now of a 13-game winning streak. And already off the tip, a violation. It's going to go back over to the Hawks. Coach Thad Mata said that he felt his team was prepared to come into this environment and play competitively. They played well on the road at the University of Dayton. They played in Tuscaloosa against the University of Alabama. So he felt like his team was competitive enough to come into this environment and stay poised and compete. Bill Lindsay, David Elliott, David Day, the officials. There's Carroll, deadly from the outside, left it short. And the fight for the rebound, the Hawks come up with a big one right there. That is going to be a key tonight. And Barley will try to go inside, and Sazanoff go the other way on him. And the Musketeers will get it back on the turnover. Well, that was a good example of a key matchup. You mentioned Sato playing Pat Carroll. Pat Carroll's going to have to step up offensively with Delonte West on the sideline. And Sato is one of the best defenders in the conference, particularly on perimeter players. We're down along the baseline, a very quick whistle. They have to move the crowd back because they're kind of leaking out into the playing area. Well, I think that's going to be a problem all night long. The student section is really overpopulated. These guys have been there 
for an hour before the game. They are overflowing from that section. You cannot let David West get the ball inside if you're a Xavier opponent. If you're a Xavier fan, you love seeing him make the catch. Well, he's the mainstay. He's been the guy that can get baskets in the paint. St. Joe's talked about defending him a variety of different ways, sometimes doubling down, sometimes playing him one-on-one. -on -one. And the quick hands there of Sato stepping out. Knocking it away from Nelson. You talk about the defensive abilities of Romain Sato. Just a wonderful athlete all around. And a great man on defender. That's Nelson. Couldn't get it to go. Sazanoff strong on the inside around David Rice. I like that matchup. Chavez against Nelson. And that time the big guy, Anthony Miles, came out to help out on the screen, leaving Sazanoff open under the basket. Chalmers, big take to the hoop, and a quick release once he got there for Lionel Chalmers. Boy, what a welcome addition he is into the game. That might have said, I'm playing with two point guards in the game. I feel like I can handle St. Joe's defensive pressure because I have Chalmers in the game and Dedrick Finn, both who can handle the basketball from the point guard position. Allen thought about it, now he'll take it. Boy, the rookie, the rookie, Allen gave the, the bet. David West, a little head fake, and West went for the block. First two minutes have started out exactly as advertised. There's the double. And on the inside, Miles block contact, and it's going to count. Chance at a three-point play now for Anthony Miles. Well, this is the part of David West's game I really love. He recognizes when he's being double teamed. He realizes where the double team is coming from. Look at how he establishes position in the low post. Now it comes to double team, and Miles just flashes down the lane. Now the crowd wanted a wall. Miles able to get the difficult deuce, misses the free throw. But great passing by David West. That's another aspect of his game. He really can do it all. Look at that move, but Nelson got too far underneath the hoop. Now Chalmers right back the other way. This is going to be a high octane game, John. Well, we don't have Delonte West in the lineup, but Tyron Barley with the basketball right now has done a terrific job when he's been given the starting nod. Sazanov. Right away with something to prove on the inside. The big man's got four. Well, occasionally, Sasnov does step up offensively, and that's just icing on the cake for the St. Joe Hawks because they rely so much on their guards to get them enough points to win the game. Sato. Oh, he is so deadly from the outside. Silky smooth with that three-pointer. I think this is where Xavier really has an advantage. Sato is just so athletic. And even though Pat Carroll is trying to match up, it's a difficult assignment. Nelson, tricky move around his man, lost Finn, and found his way to the baseline. I think Jameer Nelson is really going to step it up offensively. We talked in the opening about how he recognizes what his team needs. His team is going to need points tonight. And you're going to see Jameer Nelson be much more assertive offensively. Crowd calling for defense. St. Joe's plays it as well as anyone in the country. Chalmers. Got it. Three-pointer for Lionel Chalmers. Chalmers not a guy that looks to shoot first. He really is the floor leader. But St. Joe right now playing off of him. And a reach-in foul on Finn to the baseline, trying to contain that speed of Jameer Nelson that we just saw from the other side of the floor. And Finn gets called for his first. Keith Jackson now checks into the game, and he'll replace Finn. They're just good ball moving by Xavier to find Chalmers wide open at the top of the key. You can see all the defense compresses to the baseline because everyone has to focus on David West and keeping the ball away from him. Now well, there you go. Jameer Nelson already beginning to do what it takes and whatever it takes. And Barley knocked it away. The ball will belong to Xavier. You know, last time these two teams played at the Cinta Center last year, Jameer Nelson had 17 of his total 22 points in the first half. Everybody wonders whether or not he's capable of scoring, particularly at the next level, the NBA level. I think you're going to see him assert himself offensively tonight. Hawks trying to deny the basketball out to the wings, and now Xavier resets it with count of timer. Chalmers 
Nowhere to go up top. Stripped of the basketball. And now Nelson to run. Blocked away by Sato with contact and a foul. Talk about defense creating offense, and St. Joe again, known for having very active hands on the defensive end. You can see Barley's hands all over the basketball. Jameer Nelson just fast breaks here, and he uses his body to draw that foul from Romain Sato. Sato has such a great vertical leap. It was really Jameer Nelson who created the contact and was able to get to the foul line. One more try for Nelson. Trying to give the Hawks the lead now, four and a half in. Sometimes coaches are quick to say, my player is the most valuable player in the league. Well, Phil Martelli has said, Jameer Nelson is the most valuable player on my team. Before he got here, the team had a losing record. Since he's been here, the team has never lost. Chan again for defense. St. Joseph's right now, second best in the country in points allowed, only the Air Force, and the best in the nation in holding down a post shooting percentage. The turnover there off the hand of Sato. David West that time moved away from the basket. The Musketeers tried to post up Sato. Barley is guarding him. Sato has an advantage. Barley does a good job of keeping the ball away. Oh, goodness. Jameer Nelson is on fire here in the first half. He's got nine points in the first five minutes. This place is just full of NBA scouts, and one of the scouts asked me whether it seems as if Jameer Nelson has NBA range. I think he's answering the question right now. And now a push-off foul down low. It's going to be against Tyrone Barley. I will go against St. Joseph's, their second team foul. And it's also going to bring us to a timeout on the floor. It's like two heavyweights that have come out and really gone after each other in the opening minutes. Run out, get yourself some chips and something to drink. You might be in for a treat. This copyrighted telecast is produced by Authority of the Atlantic 10 Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlantic 10 Conference is strictly prohibited. Well, here at the Fieldhouse, it is a wild night. Huge media contingent, maybe the biggest they have ever had here. Overflow along press row. And as you can see, we couldn't fit any more in here. A national radio broadcast here for the very first time. And what has started is one heck of a ball game tonight with the Hawks on top by three in the opening minutes. Well, Jameer Nelson has just been unconsciously good. He has nine points of the Hawks' 15. I'd expect to see David West start to factor in more into the offense for the Musketeers. Finn back into the game and a little bit too strong for the freshman. Fight for the rebound. Look at who kept it alive. There he goes. And off the miss, the rebound for Anthony Miles. Now push in the back, going to be called on Bryant as he tries to move David West away from the basket. And once again, John, stressing the importance that you cannot let him catch the ball in the low post. When he does, it's almost automatic. I think the game plan for the Hawks right now is to try to force David West to catch the ball as far away from the lane as possible. This is going to be a great battle all night long. St. Joe's will rotate three different players on David West. And they can afford to give up a bunch of fouls. Fan the long range shot. Now every Xavier starter has scored, and we are tied once again. Enjoy this late. Delonte West not playing tonight. Did not even dress for the ball game. Tyrone Barley once again stepping into Philly's void. There is Barley. And he seems to turn it up a notch when he gets into the starting lineup. Barley has really improved his perimeter shooting. He was a guy that was known more for his defense than his offense. But when given the opportunity, especially as a starter for Phil Martell, he has really stepped up on the offensive end. There's the double. And West going to get called for traveling down the paint. Four turnovers now for Xavier. Well, you expect David West to be more assertive offensively, and you can see this double team by the St. Joe Hawks. David West really had no choice but to go to the baseline side. Now Nelson stepping around the screen. Wow. I 
Rose would not be surprised, Scott, to see Coach Stadmata change the defensive assignment, put a guy like Romain Sato perhaps on Jameer Nelson, because right now he is shooting over Chalmers and Finn. And West back in his way in. The foul call that's going to send him to the line to shoot two. And it's going to be on the inside. I believe they got stichitis, or did they get it on Jameer Nelson? It's always comforting when you're the coach of a player like David West, that when your team needs a basket, you don't always have to get a field goal. You can throw it into David West, and he'll get you a foul shot. He's just so good establishing position around the basket, and he's able to draw a ton of fouls. Will Connell into the ball game. Couple of changes now for the Musketeers. They rotate some new legs in, try to stay fresh. And when you got a guy like David West on your team, Xavier has made 93 more free throws than the opposing team has even attempted. He's got four here in the early going, and Xavier down by four. Musketeers win streak, third longest in the nation, and right now, in some early jeopardy, pretty feed to Jameer Nelson, who's got 14 here in the first half. Well, interestingly, Jameer Nelson is really playing as the off guard. Tyrone Barley is playing the point guard position. His job is to distribute the ball, and Nelson taking full advantage of just being able to score. Look at that block shot. And Stachitis gets fouled in the backcourt by Lionel Chalmers. That's probably a good foul to take, as it took away what would have been a sure basket for the Hawks. Smart play by Lionel Chalmers. He's been a floor leader for this club. Here you can see the block shot. Actually, two St. Joe players contesting that shot. And that's going to lead to what appears to be a transition opportunity, but Chalmers wisely takes that foul. Now Dwayne Lee, the freshman, coming in for the Hawks. And Nelson finally does miss West with a rebound. I think he's pretty happy with the role of second guard tonight because he said, I don't have to pass the ball. I can be the primary scorer. This is a lot of fun. Sato comes wide open on the baseline. Short with the arching shot. And it hit the shot clock up above the basket. So the ball will go back to the Hawks when we come back. This number 11 team in the country has come here into Philadelphia with this crowd. They've got their hands full tonight. Hawks by six. Sometimes standing room only is not a bad thing. Sometimes if you're a student, you can have as much fun in a crowded gym just by standing and watching the game going on on the floor. Jameer Nelson has been putting on a show for everybody here. Well, he really likes playing off the ball. He is just very assertive offensively, more than almost any other time I've seen him this year. He has three threes. He has 14 first half points. And he has been electrifying this crowd. St. Joe has a six-point lead, primarily because of the offensive output of Jameer Nelson. And what a time to do this, Scott, with all the NBA scouts here to really watch David West. They have an opportunity to see what a junior like Jameer Nelson is capable of doing on the offensive end of the court. Not just running the team, but scoring baskets. It's definitely a departure from what we're used to seeing from him now, playing off the ball and being looked to, to be the primary scorer. He plays on a team with the best three-point shooter in the nation, and right now he's the guy who's lighting it up from the outside. That's Nikitas. A little bit too strong, and Chalmers the long rebound. That's West. And you've got to respect the outside game he's developed. Caudill, the putback. Well, Caudill has been able to come off the bench and give that mod a good minutes. Very complimentary player to David West and certainly fills in admirably when Miles is on the sideline. It's Lee going to work on Finn, freshman on freshman. The kite is another freshman. Trying to find the open man and finally does. Oh. Jones, big put back with authority. If St. Jones will rotate three guys through the center spot, Bryant being one of them. You saw Saznov start the game. 
And between three players, Phil Martelli gets the production of one very good center. Bryant does a terrific job on the defensive end and gets a share of putbacks. Here comes West into the lane, and that soft touch doesn't work for him this time. Big save by Sato. Chalmers way outside and a little bit short. St. Joe doing a good job defensively of limiting Xavier to just one shot. This is a team that leads the conference in rebounding margin and was expected to be a big key tonight. Lee, good look inside again. And this time, Glenn Jones going to go to the free throw line. The foul call will be on Cottle. The Hawks go deep to their bench. They play 10 or 11 players. Here's Dwayne Lee, only a freshman, getting good minutes here. Draws defense to him and dumps the ball off to Jones. Now, Dwayne Jones does have difficulty, to say the least, at the free throw line this year. It's 17 out of 57, the guy who leads the Atlantic 10 in blocks. Now here comes Carroll and Bartley, a couple of starters back into the game for St. Joseph's. One of the good things about the St. Joe's front court, however, is they really don't hurt this club. They do exactly what the coach wants, which is rebound the basketball and block shots. Rarely do they come into the offensive end and look to take shots on their own. There's one out of two for Jones. And the Hawk lead their biggest now at seven. Now Jameer Nelson is on the bench. He just went out. All those free throws are being shot. Keep an eye. Jones thought he had it cleanly. So did a lot of kids wearing red back behind that basket. But he's going to get called for the foul. Good assertive move there by Will Call, the 6'9 freshman from Indianapolis. He doesn't take a whole lot of shots, but he's been terrific in the last six games. He's made 11 of his last 13, shooting 85% from the field. And one more try coming for Caudill. This one out of two, Barley authoritatively up for the rebound. You know, Musketeers really only play about seven, sometimes eight players. And in a game like this, where each possession is so hard fought and heatly contested, the fact that St. Joe's plays 10 or 11 could come into play. That might have said, you know, I really don't buy into that because my players are young, and this is such a critical part of the season. Lee, the freshman, can't get the roll, and the tip ball for Jones. St. Joe's rebounding has been a first half difference. The Xavier team has been down and down big before. They figured out a way to come back all year long. West left it short. Now Lee wants to run it. And he'll back him up. You know, the St. Joe front court is not good offensively, not nearly as good as David West is, but they are very good defensively. They're making West take difficult shots in the low post. They're making David West shoot over an outstretched hand. Time winding down the shot clock. Somebody's got to let it go. With four on the timer, Jones couldn't get it to fall. Ben, big shot from the freshman right in front of the St. Joseph's bench. Six down for Finn. Boy, what an assertive offensive player Dedrick Finn is. That man has a lot to look forward to with this young guy who's gotten a lot of minutes, especially when Chalmers was injured in the month of January. Clock crosses eight minutes left to go here in the first half. Different St. Joseph's offense without Nelson. And Chalmers with the rebound. Nearly had it taken away, but Lee is going to get called for the reach-in foul. Well, not a popular call here. 
Nor would you expect it. No, you wouldn't expect it. Dwayne Lee, though, a lot of hustle. The six-foot freshman getting some minutes puts a lot of energy into the game. And as a coach, you don't mind those kind of aggressive defensive plays, even if they result in a foul. Well, after Chalmers got the rebound, Lee awfully close. And right there when he locked arms is when the call was made. And that is going to bring us to a timeout on the floor. Xavier will get the basketball when we come back. Finn, a big three to end a scoring drought for the Musketeers. This has a lead in part because they're defending David West. Well, they're doing a terrific job on David West. As you can see, there's help defense almost every time he turns to the basket. You have two good shot blockers there contesting the shot. And I talked to Phil Martelli earlier today, and he said he was going to give David West a couple different looks, sometimes double teams from the ball side, some from the weak side. And again, David West just wears you down. He's only one for four tonight. But there's a lot of time left to play, and sometimes David West has really come and made a difference in the second half. And you can see that right hand, his forefinger on the right hand is taped, and I think sometimes that will come into play as he tries to shoot the ball. That's his shooting hand away from the basket. Not so much the power moves close in, but when he steps away from the basket and tries to take a shot from the foul line to the top of the key area. There's West inviting a crowd inside again, and a quick ball reversal now for Sato. Miles up and under. And Mallon seemed to come out with the basketball, and then David West going to get called for the reach in foul. Even though Anthony Miles is not the primary option, I'd like to see him be more assertive offensively. That will give David West an opportunity to get some rebounds from the weak side of the court, the opposite side of the basket. When you have three guys like Miles, Sato, and West together all crashing the offensive backcourt, see if you can get a lot of points just with those three guys working the glass. And they have this year. Marley trying to find a cutter, nobody's home. Backdoor cut for Nelson. That was a superb catch, and Sazen off there to finish it for him. Well, St. Joe's overloaded one side of the court. Jameer Nelson was being overplayed. Great recognition by Mallon to throw the backdoor pass to Jameer Nelson. It's kind of like defensively pick your poison. Am I going to give him the jumper on the outside, or am I going to try to contest and keep the ball away from him? Fox doing a great job here defensively. Now one-on-one. -on -one. West surprisingly giving it up the other way. Shot clock down to six. And a long range shot in and out for Finn. A rebound for Mallon. Remain Sato is a very good offensive rebounder from the wing areas. And St. Joe defensively doing a very good job of keeping him off the offensive glass. There's Nelson. He's been quiet since his 14 point explosion. Barley. Can't find the range, and a rebound for Sato. Musketeers hit five of their first six. They've got a little cold, and Miles has the answer for that. A pretty fadeaway on the right side block. Well, I think Anthony Miles can be a big factor in this game. He averages 10 points a game. He is being guarded by just one defensive player, and I think he's more skillful. He certainly has a lot more experience. And I think he could take Dave Mallon or whomever St. Joe decides to match up against him. Darrell's been very quiet so far with Sato guarding him. Barley, tough angle, and Barley hit him. Barley gave Diedrich Finn a terrific head fake. Finn went for it. And then Barley really had no one in his face as he released that basketball. Five minutes to go here in the first half. West, quick to the baseline, and Mallon's going to get called for the foul. David West, I'll say it time after time, doesn't need to make a field goal to hurt you. Look at that quick spin move to the baseline side. Mallon just slow to provide the help defense, and he gets called. For the foul, I mean, David West is just so hard to guard because he's able to draw the foul. Now Barley appears to be walking gingerly on that left foot. Or check that right foot. Barley's 
a warrior. There's another warrior, Romain Sala. You're going to see both these guys back in the game very shortly. John, there's so many people that would be quick to say that you've got to take the opportunity for the NBA and run with it, leave when you can. David West right now this year is authoring absolutely the best counterpoint I've seen to that. Well, he's just been terrific, both on and off the court. He's been a great spokesperson for college basketball. He's a candidate for the class award. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but I know everybody in Cincinnati is just thrilled that he decided to stay in school. Something great for him, very happy for him. You know, he'll always be able to go back to Xavier University. Finish his career as one of the best players ever wearing a uniform. Meantime, the best three-point shooter in the nation just got off the schneid and hit his first. Well, he hasn't had a lot of breathing room. Xavier's done a good job of really making Pat Carroll put the ball on the floor. And now Finn comes wide open again, and the freshman hits it again. Good ball movement there by the Musketeers. All of the St. Joe defense right now collapsing in the paint on David West. That's leaving guys like Chalmers and Finn open on the perimeter. Sazanoff. Boy, he wants it right now. And the tipped rebound comes down into the hands of Finn. Well, he's not that assert typically that assertive. As you said, Scott, he really wants it on the offensive end of the court. Miles, nice drop step move, and he got Mallet off balance. Well, he earns a trip to the free throw line to shoot two. Again, here you see Miles asserting himself on the offensive end. And this is where I think Xavier has a clear advantage over the St. Joe Hawks. They have the ability to just overpower St. Joe's big men around the basket and get to the foul line. But now Sato comes back in. Don't think it's a coincidence that Pat Carroll hit his first three while Sato was on the bench. And Keith Jackson, the sophomore, takes his seat once again. Miles will shoot here, trying to get the Musketeers within four. And does. And that's going to get us to a timeout. Well, David West and company with their 13-game win streak on the line have crept back to within four points. Cannon Business Solutions game story with 344 now to go. Here in this first half of play, St. Joseph's by four. Jameer Nelson had 14 points in a big bunch in the first eight minutes of this game. Both teams shooting the ball fairly well in the first half. Both are defending like crazy. Tyrone Barley could end up being an X Factor. Today. Well, he's a guy that steps up offensively, especially when he gets the starting nod. This is his fourth start of the season, and I think he really likes it. He's got five first half points so far. The 6 1 junior from Seton Hall Prep averages 12 points a game as a starter. He's not, he's playing because Delonte West will not. That stress fracture in his right fibula. And John, experience with that type of an injury is the only thing that makes it feel better. The only thing that cures it is rest, and it probably will not be entirely better till after the season. Well, I talked to Lante West last night, and he said that he wants to be ready for the Atlantic 10 tournament in as much as he wants to play desperately tonight. He really wants to be ready in the next week or so. That's the most critical part of the season for the St. Joe Hawks. Critical juncture here is Romain Sato just picked up his second foul. Team foul number six, so the next one will have the Hawks at the line. You got to wonder whether or not Sato may be taking a seat on that bench now for this last three and a half minutes. I think a good decision on the part of that matter to keep him on the sideline as long as he can so that he doesn't get that third foul in the first half. Now you look to see where Carroll ends up. The hand in his face. Finn did a good job with him, but a big offensive rebound. Oh! Oh, what a play by David West! Oh, goodness! You expect a block shot. You don't expect thievery two feet off the ground. Well, we talked about the versatility of David West, and we usually talk about his offense, but you can't forget he is one of the best shot blockers in the history of Xavier basketball and the Atlantic 10 Conference. Now, you remember, Sazanov is over seven feet tall. David West comes from the help position, almost pins that ball against the glass, and not only does he block the shot, but he draws the foul, and he goes to the foul line. Truly been all kinds of fun watching him play in his career at Xavier. You see that now coming down the stretch here in his senior season. Second player in school history with 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Tyrone Hill is the other. Tyrone Hill, of course, an NBA player. 
And David West will be an NBA player. And Tyrone Hill recently traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. West, an 81% foul shooter. This is where the foul shots are really going to come into play. And when I tell you about that statistic, Xavier actually making more than 90 foul shots than the opposing teams have taken. You can see how that's playing here in the first half. A little bit of offense from Chris Collage off the bench. His first two of the game. to get his man in the air. That is a pretty play by Anthony Miles. Good recognition again. St. Joe's decides to just play Anthony Miles one-on-one. -on -one. No help defense there. Miles doing a terrific job pivoting with that up and under move. Sometimes a good old head fake is one of the best plays in basketball. Jones showing good patience down the post with no one open. They want to get it back to Nelson. He's not there. Only the second turnover for the Hawks. The first was on the first possession of the game, so they've, in effect, gone 17 minutes without a turnover. Phil Martelli not necessarily happy with the decision of Chris Collage. Collage is really in the game to block shots, play good defense. You're rarely going to see him take a jump shot. And all of a sudden, Xavier's got the lead. And now, if you're a St. Joseph's fan, you wonder, has Xavier taken your best shot? Now still has the lead. Well, David West did a terrific job of recognizing who was open. That's why some coaches call him a point forward. He makes great decisions with the basketball, finding wide open perimeter players as the defense collapses on him. Collegiate. Oh, that's great athleticism from a big man at 6'11. Again, any point St. Joseph's gets from their big guys is a bonus. We talked about Sazanov being more assertive offensively. We've just seen Pauze take a couple of jumpers. Ben, that one's not going to go. He thought he was fouled by Nelson. The officials didn't. Get a quick look at the U.S. Airways out of town scoreboard. One other game that we are keeping an eye on for you. Richmond in the second half leading Fordham. 57 to 50. That went up in Rose Hill. Well, Scott, I think this game is turning out to be everything we anticipated. It's been back and forth. Tamir Nelson certainly has served himself in the very beginning of this first half, but we expected this game to be nip and tough from start to finish. And we're seeing all of that so far in the first half. This is Carroll. That caught in midair and nearly threw it away. Shot clock winding down, and Jones couldn't get the shot to fall. The horn did go off, the buzzer went off as the ball was in the hand of Jones. So it was a shot clock violation and turnover number three. Good defense there by the Musketeers. It's very difficult to play that intense of defense for 35 seconds. But Al Xavier with about a one second differential between game and shot clock. Take the use it or lose it 30 second timeout. And they very likely will hold out here for a shot late. Coming up at halftime, we're going to find out more about David West and how he came to stay in Cincinnati in a Xavier uniform this year. We'll have first half highlights. There have been many of them. And also a look at stats all coming up at halftime. You know, the big question about David West is what is his position going to be in the NBA? Is he a three man? Is he a four man? I really don't know. But what he does do is he just plays the game of basketball the way you're supposed to play it. And he's a winner. So wherever he plays, whatever the position and for whomever he plays for, you know, that coach is going to be blessed with a guy that really understands the game, makes great decisions with the basketball, and is going to give you his best effort every night out. My understanding of how the NBA position is played is that he would seem to fit as a four, a guy who is going to get bigger and stronger in his NBA playing days. And that would seem to be his type of game, more so than a three. Well, I think he's going to evolve as a three man, and he needs to find a place where the coach is going to recognize that and give him an opportunity to play further from the basket. You know, he's just still a young player. They are holding for the one. Now, Pat 
Looks the directions and it'll be Finn to start it. Time winding down. Sato, one foot inside the line. They call it a three. I believe it's a two at the buzzer. One official says three, the other says two. It looked like one foot inside the line as he took off. One way or another, the Xavier Musketeers leave the floor here with the lead at halftime. I think that's a big play. It might seem as only one possession or a couple points, but it's an awful lot of confidence for the Musketeers as they go into the locker room. You like to go into the locker room on an up note, and that certainly gives the Musketeers an opportunity with a big shot there by Romain Sato. And now the officials are continuing to discuss it. You can see from the replay, Sato one foot clearly on the line. He did beat the buzzer with the shot. But once again, take a look at Sato and watch him come in inside Barley. Not taken off just yet. Now he'll step in for his shot. Watch the right foot clearly on the line as he took off. Now we'll see whether or not the officials will take that and make it a two-point basket, and they do. And using the video, they do make it a two-point basket, the correct call. The Musketeers, good job by the officials, end the half on a 13-4 run, and they take a one-point lead into the locker room at halftime. It has been a terrific game so far. The number 11 Musketeers looking to win their 14th straight. We'll be back with more here at halftime in just a moment. Welcome back to Hawk Hill here in Philadelphia. Halftime for Xavier and St. Joseph's. A decision he made about one year ago has placed David West in a position to be called one of the greatest ever to play basketball in the Atlantic 10. Larry Rosen has more. A glorious season had just been completed. David West could leave Xavier University as one of the most successful players in the history of the Atlantic 10. He had helped take first-year head coach Thad Mata's team A championship and the NCAA. Personally, West had become the first Atlantic 10 player in 20 years to be named Conference Player of the Year twice. He was a consensus national All-American. It had been a wonderful run, but by April, Mata was ready to face reality. And then after the season, we met, did a lot of research, and, and he at one point on a Monday told me that, that he was going to declare himself for the draft, and you know, I was like, great, congratulations, let's get you ready. And uh, the next night at our, at our team banquet, he beat me to the podium at the end, and I thought, you know, this typifies David West. He's going to tell the fans that he's leaving. He feels he owes it to them. And uh, to my surprise, he announced that he was staying. And uh, I don't think there was a happier person in the world than I was. And Mata was ever more impressed with the underlying reasoning. He had his own desires, his own priorities, his own agenda. David felt that he, he still had some things that he wanted to accomplish in college. And um, he, he's a guy who loves Xavier University. If he wasn't playing basketball, I think he'd be having the time of his life getting his, his college degree. And, and, and I know for his family's sake, it was very important that he earn you know, the Xavier degree. And, and um, so he's you know, as, as, as focused as, as I've ever seen him now. And that is bad news for the rest of the Atlantic 10 where West is on pace to become a three-time Conference Player of the Year. Already a Naismith and Wooden Award candidate, his presence is a dual-edged sword for coaches around the conference. I think all the coaches are, are happy to have him in the league because, uh, let's face it, he's a marquee player uh, on, on a national scale. I, I think perhaps the best big guy in the country. And, and so that's good exposure for, for our league. Uh, the night before you have to play him, or two nights before you have to play him, uh, uh, you're not happy about that, but but he's a credit uh, to the game. He's a credit to Xavier University, uh, and he's a, he's a tremendous competitor. And if, if you're fortunate enough to beat him, you know you've done something. So I look forward to the challenge. I think there's a lot of you know great players in this league, and you know a lot of very good underclassmen as well. So, but it certainly is it's it's tremendous to have him stay another year and and uh, and, and and just try to have a, a, a finish up having a great career. It already has been. And his head coach says that simply by staying in the course, he will reach the next level with so much more to offer. Dave was always a guy of, of hey, I'm going to take care of myself, and and you know you other guys better make sure that you're up to par. And, and his attitude has been now where I mean he's really kind of become the team leader and, and helping the younger guys through. And and, uh, and it's amazing what it's done for his game. I mean I've told him you know the more you give, the more you're going to get back in the long run. And, and um, I, I, I believe he's a much better player right now than he was last year. 
Five Ten Basketball is brought to you by Citizens Bank, not your typical bank, and by your local Volkswagen dealers, a proud sponsor of Atlantic Ten Basketball. Forty to thirty-nine, Xavier on top by one. Well, that may not be a statistical significant, statistically significant thing for you, but realize it. With that motto as the head coach, Xavier leads at halftime. They have almost always won the game. That's an amazing number. Generally, the team that's ahead at halftime wins the game, but generally the percentages aren't so skewed, 42 to 1. And what does that tell you? There's some great halftime talks there. Sometimes I think coaches earn their keep in the last two minutes of the game and what they say to their teams in the locker room at halftime. One of the major reasons it's been this year is that Romain Sato has had some incredible second halves. And the other thing, I think, is that David West just wears you down. Sometimes you figure out a way to defend him for the first 20 minutes, but he figures it out in the second half, and then he's just so hard to guard. Sazanoff continuing to assert himself inside, but left it short. Now Chalmers, good looking feed to Miles, and Matlin just got his third. All year long, St. Joe's has been so dominant in the guard position and they've been relatively inexperienced I'll call it that in the front court here you see just terrific passing by Chalmers to Miles Miles able to again draw the foul and get to the foul line but clearly Xavier has if not perhaps the best front court in the conference I'm, I'm sure you'd have to think that David West is certainly the rock behind that but they're just wearing down the front court of the St. Joe Hawks, and they're just getting to the foul line possession after possession. Now let's see if they keep the ball in Jameer Nelson's hands or if it's more Barley controlling the pace of the game here in the second half. That has been significant in the first half of play as Nelson exploded for 14 and 8 minutes. Pat Connell did not get the same shooting opportunity. Barley in the lane. Too strong. And a tip rebound to Chalmers. Good quickness from Lionel Chalmers. Again, it's Miles. Where for West to go. Good defensive possession thus far for the Hawks. Pretty feed from Chalmers and a better block. And Miles gets the putback. But just like the way Chalmers is finding seams in the St. Joe's defense. And again, he dumps the ball off to Miles. That's the second or third time we've seen it in this game. And that is number four on Mello. Great anticipation by David West on the pass to the top. And so Xavier begins the second half with all the momentum. And now Mallon is going to have to sit for a long time. Well, this is a difficult task for Mallon. Again, only a freshman. David West, great anticipation as he reads the pass to the foul on top of the key area. Mellon's going to go to the sideline here with Coach Martelli, but he's gotten a lot of valuable minutes as a freshman and very difficult assignment to match up against David West. So now Bryant takes that task. And West. Barney had contact, didn't get the whistle. Nelson will take it himself. And West with the rebound. Well, he's just controlling the paint right now, the Miles West combination. It's just been dominating on the defensive backboard. Chalmers again into the seam, and that opens up the three. Everybody kind of standing around, and nobody for the Hawks jumped on the rebound. So now Charles will reset him. Sato, big leaping ability. And if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. He just would not be denied on that play. Pat Carroll. One of the great features of Romain Sato's offensive game, it's not just three-point shooting, it's offensive rebounding. First five points in the second half belong to Xavier as they begin to assert themselves inside. There's a reason Romain Sato is one of my favorite players in the conference, John, and it's because he beats you at both ends of the floor. Well, he does a lot of things that don't show up in the stats. Here's one of them. Look at the defense he's playing right now on Pat Carroll. He's just making it difficult for Pat Carroll to catch the basketball in a comfortable area. If he does catch the basketball, he's going to have to put it on the floor. He's just relentless on the defensive end. 
I think the league recognizes it. But then how about the offensive end? This is something that shows up in the stat sheets. An offensive rebound and a putback for two. So he has been a warrior for the Xavier Musketeers, and that's why Thabata is just feeling his team is ready to play, ready to rumble right here in the Alumni Memorial Fieldhouse under very adverse conditions. Four games back, he was in Philadelphia and beat LaSalle with 25 in the second half, 35 for the game. Nelson, his first basket since the 12-minute mark of the first half, and he's got 17. Well, during that time now, we talked about who is going to get a basket for the St. Joe Hawks, and it's going to have to be Jameer Nelson, and that's another guy ready to rumble. He's just not going to kind of roll over. Hell ball is called off the rebound, and the alternate possession will give it back over to Xavier. Good aggressive low post play here by Miles, and then equally matched by Alexander Sazanov. Idle Chalmers let it go and got it from three-point range. A little flip of the fist after it fell. 11 points now for Chalmers. Well, I think the Musketeers are recognizing where they're capable of getting open baskets, and that is with good ball reversal on the perimeter because the St. Joe defense is so concerned about protecting the lane. And a foul call on Chalmers. That'll be his second. At this juncture for the St. Joe Hawks when they're behind and they need a basket, they have to go to a guy like Jameer Nelson, but this is where Delonte West on the sideline really makes a big difference. He's an 18 or 19 point scorer per game. And he's a guy that can get his own shots and we've seen it time after time. And there's a good look at Delonte West on the sideline. He's a guy that can get his own shot. He doesn't need somebody to set up a play for him. He can break this man down on his own. How much does Phil Martelli miss having him out on the floor tonight? Well, the fifth turnover for St. Joseph's. And it goes back over again to Xavier now as the Musketeers have their biggest lead at six. Once again, terrific penetration by Chalmers. That's set that up. And Sato, there he goes. Ten How about the recognition by David West? You know, when he used the expression point forward, he had three or four players around him when he put the ball on the floor. And he just kicked the ball out to remain Sato wide open beyond the arc. Nelson's shot wouldn't fall. And the ball knocked out of bounds off the hand of the Musketeers. It'll go back over again to St. Joseph's. Look at this, three players surround David West. He just kicks the ball out to Sato. And in as much as Pat Carroll benefits from a Jameer Nelson, remains Sato, Chalmers, and some of the other perimeter players from the Musketeers benefit from having a David West. Now an easy two for John Bryant as the water is parted for him. His first two of the game. And here they come. The crowd is back on its feet and coming back into the game. Chalmers not going to get rattled by a crowd. And Nelson comes out with the basketball. Miles touched it last. And the ball goes back to St. Joseph's when we come back. Back and forth they go. Hawks had a lead, lost the lead. Now trying to work their way back into it. It is Xavier by seven. For the Musketeers, 15-23 left to go here in the ball game. Our U.S. Airways out of town scoreboard. It is a final from New York. Richmond hangs on and beats Fordham by a 60-53 final. 14-12. Myers leading the way with 17 points for the Richmond Spiders. Now the battle for position continuing to go on as you take a look. Our next telecast is going to be coming your way tomorrow from the Leah Chorus Center here in Philadelphia. The LaSalle Explorers and the Temple Isles. Temple leading a victory to guarantee itself a bye in the first round of the 8-10 tournament. Check your local listings for tomorrow night's ball game at 7. Pat Carroll, big part of what could happen here for St. Joseph's if they could get him on track. Sato right there with him. That was an interesting play right there by Sato, who went with the shooter and not the ball, and Nelson the miss. Well, again, Xavier is recognizing who's capable of scoring for the St. Joe Hawks, so they're really putting a lot of focus on that, and if it means that they leave somebody else open, they're willing to make that bet. 
Look at West, strong to the offensive glass. Xavier only had two offensive rebounds in the first half. And Jones pulls the glass away. But I just can't underestimate the ability of a big guy to pass the basketball. David West comes down with the rebound and identifies open players. You don't have to run a lot of plays when you have a guy on the floor like David West. Nelson missed twice. And West another rebound. You can see Jameer Nelson just asserting himself more offensively. He's taking difficult shots, well-guarded shots. We rarely see him do that unless his team needs a basket. Miles again, the up and under. And Barley had one foot on the line. So it goes back to the Musketeers. Good move in the low post there by Miles to get his defender up in the air. Just a bit off balance and not able to finish. And Pat Carroll will take a seat. Still only one three-point attempt on the night. Well, that has become a common theme now here in the second half. Anthony Miles kind of setting up camp down there. And as you pointed out earlier, St. Joe's may not have the answer for that. But I just like the court presence of David West. He reminds me of a player actually who played at St. Joe's for me in the early 90s, Carlin Worley. Carlin Worley was just that same type of player. Very smart, very heady, very poised. And very tough. Very tough, and when he caught the basketball, if the defense in any which way cheated, he was able to find the open man. So he could score, but he could also get the ball to a guy who was even more open than himself. This eight-point advantage for Xavier is their largest of the game. Neither team is led by double digits. somewhere to go with the basketball. There's Barley. Left it short, and Miles got the rebound. There are not a lot of established offensive options on the floor right now, aside from Jameer Nelson. I think Phil Martelli has always been concerned about his team scoring enough points, especially with Delonte West on the sideline. He's been able to win a ton of games this year because of the team's defense. It's going to be good one way or the other. It went for Miles. If not, it would have been a basket interference with the net underneath. And now you've got a double-digit lead for one side. It's Xavier up by 10. Will Caudill will come in now to replace Anthony Miles, who's done a terrific job here tonight. 13 points for Miles. And when you play with David West, I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but when you play with a guy like David West, he makes everybody else better. Miles is certainly one of the guys who benefited from the attention that David West receives from almost every a lot of wrestling going on down there in the lane and Caudill's going to get called for the personal that'll be his second there's a freshman Dietrich Finn back into the game he had a big first half and Chalmers who's done a terrific job not only And there's nothing too tricky about other, other than that ball fake, head and shoulder fake. And if you have any doubts about this guy's ability oh. to freeze the defender, I mean, it looked like Jameer Nelson just 
nailed the defender's feet into the floor. 22 points so far. I tell you, you got two of the marquee players here, two guys. It is so much fun to watch. And right now, David West has had more help from the supporting cast in a big way so far. Xavier with the lead. There's Sato. Way off from long range. Might have rushed the shot. He thought he got fouled. St. Joe's with a little bit of momentum back now. Nelson from way out. And Jones gets fouled by West. He was just a beneficiary of being in the right place, right time, and West fouled him to keep him from scoring. Well, it's been a miscommunication, if you will. I'm David West, no choice, really, but to foul. Well, it's only his second, and as we said, the percentages with the struggles that Jones has had from the free throw line would make sense to foul him in this situation. That is only the fifth free throw attempted in the game by St. Joseph. And when a team only shoots five free throws, it gives you a sense of how they're getting most of their shots. So most of these shots for the St. Joe Hawks are coming from the perimeter, Jameer Nelson particularly. Para misses. And the foul paid off. Xavier by nine with the basketball. Here Smith came wide open from the baseline screen. And Jones, good position, established the rebound. Well, the crowd gets a sense here that the St. Joe Hawks are going to have to make their move. With just about eight minutes to play in this game. There's Carroll finally open from three. And now you see how dangerous he can be when he gets open. He's had two shots from beyond the arc. He's hit them both. And Jameer Nelson sets him up with that baseline drive. He forces help defense. David West was the closest player defensively. And he had to step out and try to get to Pat Carroll. Here they come. And now Barley to steal. And Barley the lay in. It's a 10 0 St. Joseph's run. We got a four point game. Well, the sixth man is coming into play. This crowd is now on its feet. The noise is almost deafening. What'd you say? West fouled on the way in, and he'll earn a trip to the free throw line. Ryan called for the personal. Well, you just want the ball in David West's hands when you need somebody to make a play. Here's just terrific defense by Barley as he takes the ball out of Diedrich Finn's hands. That gets his crowd really back into this game. And the decibel levels in the Alumni Memorial Fieldhouse are now off the charts. Albeit briefly, the 10 0 run continues. That Mata, right now, very calm, and I think he wants that demeanor to be the way in which his team carries itself right now. St. Joe's makes a run that's not unexpected, but you really want a guy like David West to make the right decisions for your team and to go to the foul line. David West, on his own, can really change the momentum. Well, that stopped the bleeding, at least for now, and a timeout on the floor with 7-10 left to go. David West and the Xavier Musketeers at one time had a 14-point lead. St. Joe's trying to shoot their way back into the game. Our Citizens Bank, not your typical play of the game, would be Jameer Nelson driving and finding an open Pat Carroll. Well, you ordinarily would say the best three-point shooter in the country knocking down a three is an unusual play, but tonight it has been in part because of the defense of the Musketeers and Jameer Nelson playing off the ball. Pat Carroll, pretty quiet so far tonight from beyond the arc. Citizens Bank, not your typical bank, and Pat Carroll has had the two shots from three-point range. He's drained them both. Go on record right now is saying that if St. Joseph's wants to win this game, that's got to happen a couple more times here in this last seven minutes. Now he's such a critical part of the St. Joseph's offensive scheme. And right now with Delonte West on the sideline and Jameer Nelson being relegated to the second guard spot. And Sato going to get caught for a reach in. He thought he had a held ball. 
Third on Soto, fourth on the team. Pat Carroll just not getting enough looks. Here's Pat Carroll now in the point guard role. And Romain Soto going aggressively after the basketball. He might have had all ball. Being forced to help pick up the scoring slack. You see, the Hawks really started cold in the half. They've hit their last four shots. That's Nelson. A little too strong. Jones, big offensive rebound. In a five point game, they're all big. Get out there! Now Barley Rosetta. Barley now at a three. Well, what I was about to say, good poise, good patience by Barley. And he just created his own shot. A good couple steps beyond the three-point arc. Now it's a two-point game. And now it's a steal for Garrett. Using the right hand, he ties this game at 59. Get ready, John. They're going to rip this place down now. All the way back from 14 down. Miles has the answer. He's got 15 points. Scott, this is what basketball in the month of March is supposed to be at the Atlantic 10 tournament. It's going to look like anything like this. What we're seeing, the quality of basketball here tonight, we have a lot to look forward to. Chalmers called for the personal. And the reach in on Carroll. That'll be team foul number five for the Musketeers. And number three on Lionel Chalmers. But now Finn will come back into the game and replace Keith Jackson. Gutty performances by the St. Joe Hawks. Here you see good defense by Pat Carroll to tie the game, but gutty performances defensively by the St. Joe Hawks to get back into this game. That was the end of a 15 to one run. It's now 15 to three as St. Joe's is climbed back in. Barley again, got it. Tie again again at 61. Barley's Tough got shot. Tough shots by Tyrone Barley. And he's a guy that doesn't get a lot of credit. He talks so much about Jameer Nelson and Delonte West and Pat Carroll. But what a statement he has made in the last minute and a half of this game. The volume in here is incredible right now. Finn. Off the miss. The Hawks now come down with a chance to take the lead. Nelson gets it for him. And this place erupts. Unbelievable. Down 14 points. They're up by two. 24 for Jameer Nelson. A good choice by Jameer Nelson. Again, he has a better chance of scoring before the defense is set. And he just loaded that ball high off the glass. A huge basket by Jameer Nelson. Miles has been so consistent inside. With his own rebound to follow. Musketeers just continue to hurt the Hawks in the paint. They've been very successful scoring in the lane, certainly getting to the foul line. Barley's feeling it right now, left it short, and got his own rebound. Back to the top now for Bryant, and a reset for the Hawks. A little bit quicker to the ball right now, the St. Joe's Hawks, and maybe this is where depth comes into play. I mean, this game is as hard fought as you're going to find. That's Nelson. Too strong. And look who comes out with the rebound. David West in a big situation with three and a half left. Davis won their last three in this winning streak by a combined four points. They've been in tight ones. They've won them all. And West is fouled on the way in with 3.15 left to go. When you're in a tie game on the road with three minutes to go and you're playing a team that's very comparable to yourself, 
It's just so comforting to have a guy on your team who can get to the foul line. And again, just look at the way in which David West creates some space, forces the defender to get off balance. And you want to talk about a guy with all kinds of cool, with this place going berserk in front of him, behind him. Doesn't bother him a bit, doesn't bat an eye line. Over 75% as a team. David West, 81% as a free throw shooter. That is huge for a guy who gets the ball inside and gets fouled as often as he does. So, it's back up to a two-point lead for the Xavier Musketeers. Jameer Nelson has led the St. Joseph's charge back into the game. Can they come all the way back? There's going to be inside game of Dayton. Make that Xavier going to take over here late. Gatton Business Solutions game story with 3.15 left to go. You see the numbers. St. Joseph's on a 19-7 run. The rebounding has been won by the Hawks as well. Xavier has that strong inside game. They have been winning it at the free throw line, and that's likely where they would have to salt this game away with 3.15 left to go, a two-point ball game. Terrific basketball, Scott, and sometimes it seems like we talk over each other because we just can't hear each other. The volume in this building is deafening, and it's everything we expected between these two clubs, each of which is vying for higher consideration by the NCAA Tournament Committee of Selection Sunday. Well, to that end, this game means more to St. Joseph's then than it does to Xavier, who's a very well-established team that has been all year long. Barley, looking inside. What extra pass is the difference? The Musketeers focusing defensively on the perimeter, leaving only one guy left to defend the lane. Bryant gets an easy basket. With nine and a half minutes to go, Xavier led by 14. And West lost the handle on the basketball. Nelson, the speed, the lead. But part of the game plan was to push the guards for the Musketeers further from the basket, making it more difficult for David West to catch the ball in the paint. There he is again with Brian right on his hip. In all of this, you wonder where is Remain Sato? Hasn't had an offensive touch in a long time. Shot clock down to four. Finn. Good, look at the basket for the freshman. And he did not hesitate as the shot clock wound down. Scott, what you're seeing here by both clubs is tremendous points on the offensive end. Sometimes teams get a bit antsy and they just take the first available shot. You see both clubs probing the defense even if it takes 25 seconds before they take the shot. This is just great coaching, terrific boys. The Savior team is one that can spread a lot of the wealth. Jameer Nelson has helped lead this charge back for St. Joseph's. That was the lead again. And then back the other way, you've got the freshman, Diedrich Finn, making a big shot with time expiring on the shot clock. Now, what that means is that all five starters are in double figures for the Musketeers. John, when that's happened this year, they are 11-0. They're perfect when they get balanced scoring. But again, you can throw all those kind of numbers out the window right now with a minute 30 to go. Jameer Nelson having a terrific game, 26 points. He's only averaging 17. He has really stepped it up. So is that guy, David West. There's a game reset. Musketeers can stop it three times. The Hawks can stop it twice. And St. Joseph's does own the possession arrow in a tie game with just under a minute and a half left. Well, every coach goes through time and possession and situations in practice, and this is really starts to come into play. Nelson, got it. 28 for Jameer Nelson, and the lead again for St. Joseph's. Jameer Nelson just creates that space, guy. He comes to a dead stop. He fades away. Lionel Chalmers actually wanted a push-off call. It was an offensive foul. Jameer Nelson, difficult to guard. Quick hands from Bryant, he knocked it away, and it belongs to the Hawks. That's 
tell you what, John, right now it's five on six. Quick hands there by John Bryant to flip the ball away from David West. So now some pressure from the Musketeers with under a minute to go. 25 second differential between game and shot clock. Xavier will get it back again. Nelson in the lane. Won't fall. Bryant fouled from behind by David West with 39.1 left to go. Jameer Nelson so difficult to guard. David West has to give help here on the drive down the lane. But when he does, it leaves John Bryant unguarded. You can see the frustration on David West's part. He did what he had to do, but no one was there to block out John Bryant. And Bryant, just a 48% free throw shooter, hits a big one. This one would be bigger. It would make it a two-possession game. And now Thad Mata needs a timeout. And look at how fired up they are on the bench. Listen to how fired up they are here at the field house. Well, that's a bonus when you get John Bryant going to the foul line and he knocks down one. But you got to remember, Scott, that the Musketeers have played close games the last three outings. The last three outings have been decided by just one point, so they've been here before. Now look at the East standing. St. Joseph's has clinched the division title in the first round by in the championship. If you look down, you've probably heard the story of St. Bonaventure. The 1-15 conference record is because St. Bonaventure discovered they were playing with a player who was ineligible. They forfeited six of their wins. Then the Atlantic 10 presidents turned around and decided that the Bonnies were ineligible for the conference tournament. At that time, St. Bonaventure's players decided that their season was in effect over. Now in the West, you've got Xavier and Dayton with a bye, and Richmond, because the bodies have been slid down to six, also get a bye in the first round of the Atlantic 10 playoffs. Well, it certainly changes the landscape in the Atlantic 10 tournament. As you mentioned, Richmond now clinches the third seed in the Atlantic 10 West, and they will receive that bye. So certainly a lot happens around the league as a result of that decision by St. Bonaventure. Big free throw for Bryant in a four-point game. Two-possession game now with under 40 seconds left. St. Joseph's without their leading scorer on the brink of an upset. West, tough angle. It tickled the rim and fell, and now a quick timeout for Xavier to set the defense in a two-point game. I like that decision by not only Coach Thad Mata, but David West to get the two. St. Joe did a very good job of pressuring the perimeter players. You really want the ball in the hands of your best offensive player, your best decision maker. That's why you saw Nelson down at one end and now West here at the other. And again, David West just puts the ball on the floor, takes two dribbles to the baseline side and gets a favorable bounce. We talked about West in the last game. His tip-in wins the game against George Washington. Obviously here, Xavier's going to put a lot of pressure on the ball, try to come up with a steal. Well, you talked about West, the tip-in at the buzzer wins the game. The game before that, Miles, a tip-in at the buzzer forced overtime. They beat Duquesne. The game before that, Lionel Chalmers had a put back with 24 seconds to go that turned out to be the winner in the game against Dayton. Here you see this full court pressure by the Musketeers trying to come up with a quick turnover. Xavier can only stop it once. And Stekinas beats the defense. He was the guy they wanted to foul and they did with 21.6 to go. Xavier did a terrific job, actually, of keeping the ball out of the hands of Jameer Nelson and Pat Carroll. So you've got Stekinas, who's an excellent free throw shooter at 85%, but he also is a freshman. Yeah, you got to test the rookies in this situation. You got to put a guy on the line like John Bryan or a freshman. And in spite of the fact that Phil Martelli really has four guards in the game right now, you got to test the guy that's the most untested. And off the miss, Xavier an opportunity, under 20 to go. Carroll knocked it away. The Musketeers will keep it with under 17 seconds left. That is a big miss for Stekinas. The other end on that one and one. It leaves the door cracked open for Xavier now. And a timeout. So that's going to be it.
for Thad Mata's team. He's out of timeouts. But Xavier's had some close calls, as we said, in the middle of this win streak. Now they won the game against George Washington on Saturday. Here you can make the call. David, David West, West catches the basketball. Loose ball. Jumpers. Off the One miss. There you go. And right there. Now the buzzer has not sounded. The light has not gone off. Tipped, by Tipped up. And it just beat it. Now, there was all kinds of second guessing that was going on. The officials had to look at it at the monitor. They made sure that they got it right. And that ruling meant disappointment for the Colonials who thought they had an incredible victory at the Cintas Center. And it meant lucky number 13 for Xavier. You can see the uh, expression on the GW players' faces as to what the officials decided after a, a very lengthy review at the scorer's table. And you can see the last three games for the Musketeers. And I actually talked to Thad Mata about that. He said the week before, particularly the George Washington game, his team had played on the road, and they were a bit tired. They played three games on the road in a week, and they came back at home to play George Washington. And a, a bit of heavy legs going into that game. They were up 10 points with four minutes to go. So here in the timeout, Thad Mata recognizing here he doesn't have any timeouts. I don't think there's any surprise here. They're going to try to get the ball to David West. St. Joseph's defensively are going to focus on keeping the ball away from West. As always, if you're a Xavier opponent, though, and West is not there, keep an eye on number 10, Romain Sato, standing at the foul line. 15 seconds left to go. Xavier down by two. That's Chalmers. Off oh, angle. Got it! Oh, what a shot by Chalmers. Tie game at 71. Oh, you want your leader to take that shot. It's either going to be David West or Lionel Chalmers. And Nelson nearly lost it. Two seconds to go. The prayer not answered. We are going to overtime. Wow. Wow, he's right. Almost losing my voice here. Lionel Chalmers comes up big. It was obvious that they couldn't get the ball to David West, so he just decided to power the ball down the lane. Jameer Nelson did a terrific job defensively. I was almost surprised that Chalmers could get the ball out of his hands and up to the rim. What a spectacular shot he hit at a very tough angle and off balance in the lane. Here you're seeing two great players offensively and defensively. Chalmers just fading away. A very difficult shot. Clutch play there by Lionel Chalmers. And talk about the impact he has had to this team since he's come back. Playing very healthy basketball. His numbers aren't the same before the injury and after the injury. But you want a leader on the court, guy with all this kind of experience, when you're ready to move into the Atlantic 10 tournament, you're playing a very difficult team on the road. So now for St. Joseph's, which had all the momentum as we came down the stretch and had itself a four point lead late. Now Nelson lost the basketball here. He had little choice but to let it go. That was big. The Xavier Musketeers actually flicked the ball out of Jameer Nelson's hand, so he didn't have a chance to just push the ball, motor the ball over half court and get another step or two closer to the three point arc. 71 71 as we go to overtime. Five extra minutes on the clock. Robert Hartshorn, a walk on with his arm around Nelson, trying to fire him up. It's not uncommon. Hartshorn was a cheerleader who walked onto the basketball team. Nelson has been marvelous here tonight. Hartshorn and the rest of the guys on the bench, including Phil Martelli Jr., Mallon sitting with four fouls, Sazanoff right on down the line. For the St. Joe Hawks, there's only one player really that's been in this situation before, Jameer Nelson, a guy that's the only returning starter. Phil Martelli lost 5,000 points in the guys who graduated last season. So Jameer Nelson's going to be the guy that has to lead this. And now the other way, Xavier will get their first crack of overtime. Xavier coaches are actually holding up signs calling out offensive and defensive plays. Oh, a long range shot from David Van. Right in front of his own bench. He has shown no fear tonight. The freshman's got 14. And no one can hear themselves talk, so coaches are having to rely on hand signals or signs along the bench. 
sends him up big there with that jumper beyond the arc. Now Carroll. Missed from three-point range. And Bryant just out fought Chalmers for the rebound. That's Nelson. Got it. Tied again at 74. Now we're seeing two teams just continue to raise the bar. They're just stepping up with each possession. And West, pretty touch inside with the left hand from David West. He's got 17. Just a variety of moves in the low post. He just floats the ball up there with his left hand. Comforting again to be able to throw the ball into the post and think that good things are going to happen. Nelson. Nothing at the baseline. Tried the backdoor cut. Not there. Well, he doesn't have a dribble over there. They nearly lost the shot clock at five. Nelson way outside. And Bryant, the recipient. It falls for John Bryant. 2.45 to go in overtime. And now Bartley is down. That would be a major loss right now for the Hawks. Well, Phil Martelli is signaling for Dwayne Lee to come into the game. Mark Bass, the assistant coach, just gives him a pat on the rear because this is a difficult situation for the freshman to come in and replace the junior Tyrone Bartley. And here you can see Jameer Nelson being pushed about eight feet beyond the three-point arc. The ball hits the front of the rim, and Miles and West are right there to gather the rebound. Neither of them grabs it, and it leaves the ball loose for an easy putback by the St. Joe Hawks. Crowd is chanting Barley, Barley, for Tyrone Barley, but he is just very gingerly testing that. Right leg, right ankle, or right foot. It's real hard to tell from this point. It looked like he was pointing over toward his calf area. But whatever it is, he's at least going to sit for right now. Jameer Nelson will be running to the backcourt with freshman Dwayne Lee. Big spot for Dwayne Lee, the freshman out of Jersey City, but played his high school ball at St. Anthony's. He's played in big time situations yeah. at the high school level. I think you can count on him to play very solid defense. The question mark is going to be at the offensive end, and I think that Jameer Nelson is going to be the guy that almost answers that question for him. Different look now for the Musketeers. First time West has stepped out in a while. Try to set up Sato. Miles. Missing from in close. West keeping it alive. And lost the handle on it. It'll go back to the Hawks. Just good active defense, actually, by both front court players. David West actually loses the ball, rolls off his fingertips. Now, in about two minutes left, we are in overtime in a tie game. Sato knocked it away. It'll stay with the Hawks with 17 left to shoot. A screen at the top of the key there by Pat Carroll. And the Musketeers switch the screen. Nowhere for Nelson to go. He'll try a three. And West all alone for the rebound. There's almost no doubt who's going to take the shot for the St. Joe's Hawks. West in the lane had the touch to hit it. Brown wanted a traveling violation, but I don't think the pivot foot moved. His knee bent, and he kind of broke down on the leg, but I don't think the pivot foot moved. And now Phil Martelli wants a timeout. I agree with you, Scott. That was a difficult basket. As he took a dribble into the lane, he recognized there was help defense coming, but he stopped. He pivoted. He kept his pivot foot planted, and he was able to make that very difficult field goal. Here's another good look at it. As he fades away, creates the space, and knocks down a very difficult shot. And right now, that's the difference. Big play inside David West. 
Under a minute and a half left, gives Xavier the lead back. Well, here's the guy that you want to take this big shot. And again, two dribbles into the lane, three dribbles, a good pivot. And again, he gets the defender off balance, but he doesn't lift that pivot foot. And he's able to finish the shot, even though it was off balance. Great feel for the game. There are your marquee players. Nelson trying to carry so much of the load on his own. West another double-double at 19 and 11. Now West just raised the bar a little bit more, and now a two-point lead. Nelson brings the Hawks back the other way. Here Nelson, 29 field goal attempts, so uncharacteristic of him. He's so much more content to pass the ball than take the shot. Carroll missed on the three. Jones stepped on the end line, trying to make the save. Well, the ball goes back over to Xavier now. They've got a two-point lead and the ball with a minute 12 left to go. Sato may have turned an angle. Put a lot of pressure there on Pat Carroll. Pat Carroll really wants to finger into the offensive flow and up Jameer Nelson, but Sato doing a good job of putting pressure on Pat Carroll. West, another big play inside for the big horse. What great recognition by David West on the defensive switch. Jameer Nelson was forced to pick up David West. He recognized it and again just decided to take Nelson in the paint. Under 50 seconds left. Barley in a lot of trouble. And now they reset it. Nelson trying to come open. Credit Chalmers who's right in his jersey. And Barley got contact. He is going to go to the free throw line with 35.3 left to go. Here's where getting Barley back into the lineup has mattered. Finn not happy with himself on that possession. Barley does a terrific job with these head fakes to get Finn in the air. Not a lot of contact, but enough to draw the foul. And Barley was a guy that was out of the game just a few seconds ago with some discomfort to his right leg. And he's, he's actually holding his calf right now in between free throws. Your experience would be that's likely a cramp. Bit of a cramp, and those are the kind of things you have to work yourself out of very quickly, and you're going to have to play through the pain. So two for Barley. Jackson comes back in for Xavier, and Miles will take a seat. Barley's got 14. Coach Thad Mata wants four ball handlers in the game with David West. You could actually say it's five ball handlers in the game. So Nelson, who ran over the back, is going to get called for the foul. And with no time expiring off the clock, it's up to the Musketeers now in a one and one situation. This will be the last one and one Or check that. That is the eighth team foul on St. Joseph's. Not a bad call here. When you're behind, you really want to extend the game. And you want to put pressure on the inbounds pass. If you don't get the ball, you obviously want a foul. Finn goes to the foul line. He's a 65% foul shooter. And again, another opportunity to test the young guy. We saw Chet Stachitis earlier on the foul line for the Hawks. Now we have a chance for Diedrich Finn to step up here and be a hero with a one and one, 35 seconds to go. This takes all kinds of concentration. Oh, that is huge. I'll tell you what, they have been so happy, as you see, Miles getting set to come in. They have been so happy with the play of Diedrich Finn in his freshman year. And he has just shown more and more of that medal tonight. He has been wonderful here this evening. Terrific, particularly handling the basketball this year, Scott. Two and a half assists every turnover. You don't expect to see that from a freshman. Two big free throws, and now the Hawks have to have it twice. Nelson way off balance. Wouldn't go for him. The rebound for West. And he gets fouled at 23.7. So Xavier has clearly taken command now with 23.7 seconds left here in overtime. Xavier Musketeers playing with a very small lineup. No surprise that David West comes up with that rebound. And look at just this pivot and floater with the left hand. 
And look at this take again from beyond the three-point arc, a couple dribbles, and a pivot in the paint. It's been the day to West show in the last couple minutes of this game, especially in overtime. That is seven overtime points now for him. And the lead is out to five. The play of David West at this point is really unteachable. This is a level of experience that he's acquired in the trenches over four years of high-level competition. Still a two-possession game. Hawks need it twice. Nelson tries to get the first one and does. Great job using his body to protect the basketball. And a quick timeout. 30. Had an open path to the basket. Phil Martelli wanted the foul. Jameer Nelson just exploded to the basket. Sometimes he actually creates the contact. Here you see that high screen by Bryant. West gets held up. You see the up deep pass. The Musketeers avoid contact. Jameer Nelson signaling that he wanted the foul. He doesn't argue a lot. You know that he thought he got foul, but at the same time, if you're looking at it from that angle we just showed you on the camera, he did initiate the contact to a certain degree with the forearm. And again, sometimes, Scott, I think that officials want to be really sure if they're going to make a call in the last 15 seconds of a game. If there's some contact, but not enough for the player like Jameer Nelson to complete the play, sometimes you're not going to get that call. Just one shy of the career high. St. Joseph's needs a steal. And a foul call on Lee, who pushed off on Finn on the inbound. So 14.4 to go, and it'll be a two-shot foul. A little bit of the pressure gets lifted this time, and Finn will go back to the free-throw line. Well, almost a repeat here. Xavier throws the ball across the baseline. David West looks like he's tripped up a bit. But Dwayne Lee putting pressure on Finn doesn't allow him to catch the basketball. Finn will go to the foul line without any time expiring. There, well, there's a question right now as to whether time did run off the clock and whether it should have run off the clock. And now they'll put it back to 15.1 seconds, which is where it was before that began. Well, I've actually seen this happen before. It happened actually in a game where I coached, and sometimes the timer almost anticipates the pass coming into the field of play. It did not, and they hit the timer and a second or two runs off the clock. So good officiating there to put an extra second back on the clock. Good free throw shooting there for Finn. 17 points for the freshman here tonight. Make it a five point game again with 15 seconds left. And does. He has been money. Oh, he stepped up at crunch time and you can be a 65% free throw shooter. But if you're an 80 or 90% at crunch time, that's what really matters. The miss by Stachitis. Nelson wanted contact he didn't get. West got himself a rebound with 2.3 to go. Jameer Nelson telling the fans, don't do that. Don't express yourself that way. This has been a wonderful game tonight, and it looks like Xavier is going to leave here with a victory. Well, Thad Mott is really incensed that the What's happening here? This has been a great game. There's absolutely no reason for this to happen. And I got to tell you something that up until this point in time, John, this is probably one of the best performances I've seen by a crowd all year long. What they did for their team, what they did in keeping them in the game. And at this point, that cannot happen to blemish this at the end, regardless of the level of frustration. Well, I know that Don DeJulia right now, the athletic director of St. Joe's, has that the public announce system, he may make some comment to the crowd. This has been a wonderful college basketball game, including the crowd, including the students being here an hour before the game. And there's really no place in college basketball for students in any way to detract from what is happening on the basketball court. And I believe that St. Joseph's, because of that, has been assessed with a technical foul. Sometimes a crowd will be given a warning. Really not sure of, of all the issues here surrounding the decision of the officials to give a technical. 
So not right now. But both of these clubs have played their heart out. Xavier is going to win this game because they earned it in overtime. And I think that the St. Joe basketball players would readily admit that. There's no reason at this point in the game. I'll tell you what. For any fan this to take over. anything away from the players. I think it's irresponsible of the fans to take the game away from the players by acting out, by throwing things onto the court. It's just too good of a basketball game in the month of March. Well, once again, here we are in the closing seconds of play. Stachitis on the miss. And now Nelson gets the basketball back. He's trying to buy contact here as he sees the time, sees the game situation, down five. No call right there. That is probably what angered the fans as he did get it up on the rim. And then David West got fouled. You can see some debris right there that was coming. There were T-shirts actually at first and a couple of beads that some of the students had been wearing that ended up hitting the floor. And as we watched the replay, that was a good no call. The officials made the right call. The fans did not have as good of an angle. They should allow the game to be decided by the officials and the players. You never want to see a game terminated even with two seconds to go. Now Thad Mata had brought his team off the floor. The teams exchanged congratulations. The Xavier Musketeers were leaving. And now that stance has changed. Everybody's turned around and it looks like they are going to finish the last 2.3 seconds here. As West goes to the free throw line for the technical foul shots. And there's something to be said about class on and off the court. And I think Thad Mata if he decided to keep his team here, I think that's obviously says a lot for him and the Musketeers. So now back at the other end, West who got fouled before that technical foul was called, will be at the line to shoot two. And knowing the coaching staffs of both schools, I think both teams and both coaching staffs I'm very proud of their team. There is no disgrace in losing this basketball game. Phil Martelli will go into this locker room very proud of his team. This will be a, a game to build on. And perhaps he'll have Delonte West back for the Atlantic 10 tournament. So here you see the two coaches talking it over. I'm sure Phil is apologizing for the way in which these students behave. And I think both clubs can walk off the court here. Just very proud of how hard they play and the quality of basketball they put on the court tonight. College basketball is what it is in this country today because of the way these two teams have played tonight. They played a marvelous game, and there you see a terrific shot of David West and Phil Martelli exchanging congratulations. What happened in those couple of moments does not diminish from what we saw here in overtime tonight. And Xavier continues the win streak, one shy of their team record now. 14 games in a row. John, they haven't lost since January 7th. Well, they have a chance to finish with a home game. They play Temple coming up, and they've just played great basketball going into the Atlantic 10 tournament. Tremendous momentum. 88 to 80.